everybody. Welcome to Oregon Zoo Facebook Live. My name is Margo Monti. I'm a veterinary technician here at the Oregon Zoo, which kind of means that I'm a nurse for all the animals here, so I get to do a lot of different things. And today I have uh, one of our western pond turtles who is about to be released back into the wild. And we are going to take an x-ray um, to make sure that a, a treatment for a shell infection that it had is healing up well. So can you tell me, Margo, tell us about a little bit about this turtle story? Sure. Um, this turtle uh, was hatched out in the wild in the state of Washington, probably up in the Columbia Gorge in 2005. And it came to the Oregon Zoo and was part of our Head Start program. Um, so um, our keepers raised it up from about the size of a quarter um, to the size that was big enough that a bullfrog could no longer eat because bullfrogs are an invasive species to this area and they like to eat uh, baby pond turtles. So Astrid is asking how old is this turtle? So this turtle is 15 years old and they usually live to be 50 to 70 years old so this turtle's um, still pretty young so we hope it has a nice long life ahead of it. Um, Western pond turtles are are endangered in the state of Washington and threatened in the state of Oregon. So we're working really hard to try to get their numbers back up. All right, so what's the first step in taking an x-ray here? Well, the first thing we have to do is to position uh, the turtle on our x-ray plate. So if you want to follow me over here, we can do that. Um, so this machine up here actually generates the x-rays so it'll shoot, it's an, a kind of an invisible beam that will shoot down through the turtle and onto this plate here, which actually records the image. Margaret, can you tell us what an x-ray actually is? Boy, that's a good question, yeah. An x-ray, it's, it's a type of radiation. Um, it can be, you know, other types of radiation are radio waves, are um, satellite rays, so the, you're, you are seeing me in this transmission through um, a certain type of radiation, radio waves. Um, this particular frequency, for lack of, <laughs> that's what it is, this particular frequency of radiation actually um, will produce images um, if, if it's um, transmitted at the right frequency and onto the right thing. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> that's, it's kind of complicated, but I will be happy to look it up and give you guys, not look it up, but I can give you some more information another time. So we're gonna place the turtle on this plate. I have a little light here that shows where the most of the x-rays are gonna be concentrated. Um, he's gonna try to run away, so I'm gonna just put him, I'm gonna hide him in a safe spot. The x-rays will shoot right through this foam, but the turtle feels like it's safe and hidden and covered. Um, we also need to know what's right and left. So I have a little lead marker. X-rays can't shoot through lead, and you'll see what that looks like on the film when we're done. All right, let's hide, my friend. Okay, so X-rays. It's not going to hurt the turtle to take this X-ray today. Um, if one is exposed to too many X-rays over the course of one's life, it can possibly lead to some health problems. So for that reason, we are all going to get out of the way. I take a lot of x-rays for my job, and so I don't want to have them accumulate in my body. So we're going to go behind a lead barrier, because as I said, the x-rays can't shoot through lead, and we're going to shoot this film real quick. All right. So everybody get a safe distance or get behind some lead, and we're going to go to the control room where we shoot the x-ray. And all I have to do is push this little button. There we go. Now we're going to come back out and get our turtle. And the x-ray has popped up on our screen here. Um, as you can see, it, <laughs> it moved a little bit, but we still have a pretty nice image here. Um, so it used to be x-rays were taken on film, like a giant piece of film. And I can show you that. Um, but now this is all digital, so it's, it's kind of neat. So we can do all kinds of things like change the size of the image. Here's our little right-hand right marker. 
um, the lead marker you can see that looks really white and um, so we're looking at the the bones of the of the turtle um, the shell of the turtle is actually part of its skeleton it's made of bone so it shows up pretty well and there's its skull and there's its little feet. So Margo, is the shell actually part of a turtle's skeleton? It really is, yes. It's, like I said, it's made of bone. And I can show you, um, I have another, another way of looking at these guys, which is really interesting. Um, and I can show you what that looks like. So can you, can you show us really quick though, point out some of the, some of the parts of this turtle skeleton? Sure, so here's a skull, oops. There's his skull and there's his feet. That's his tail right here. Oh, this is a very sensitive screen. Um, there's his backbone. And then all these little dots that you're seeing are part of the, the shell infection that are, it's healing in, um, but the bone hasn't filled in 100% yet. So it looks um, a little bit uh, pockmarked. But as you can tell, if you look at the actual turtle shell, you can see it doesn't, it's not really full of holes, it's just a little bit dimpled um, where it's, it's healing in with, with healthier tissue. So Avery is asking, how big will this turtle get? Um, this turtle will probably get to be about that much bigger. So they grow, you know, a little bit every year and you can actually sometimes tell how old they are by looking at um, the way that the, these are called scutes the way these scutes grow. Um, so the bottom, the top of a turtle is called the carapace and the bottom is called the plastron. There's some fun words for you. And we can tell that this turtle is a male because the plastron has a little bit of a concave surface to it. And if it was a female, this would be all flat. Um, turtles, hmm? Well, Libby's asking how many eggs this turtle Oh, Olivia, that is a really good question. They can lay, they usually lay about six to ten eggs at a time, um, but I have, I have some show and tell for you in a few minutes that you can actually see that. All right, so you have another way of looking at the inside of this turtle, right? We do. Uh, we just, we were very uh, fortunate to, um, to receive a grant through our, through the Oregon Zoo Foundation, and I would really like to take a moment to shout out um, big thank you to the Zoo Foundation donors who paired up with the um, MJ Murdoch for Charitable Trust and actually helped us to purchase this machine. This is a CT scanner. Um, CT scans for computerized tomography. And tomography is just a fancy word of, uh, fancy way of saying, um, looking, looking at things in slices. So what this is, I'm not gonna do a real CT today because it takes too much time. Um, but what we would do is we would put the turtle on here. Oopsie, the turtle says, nope, no CT today. But we would put the turtle on here. It would probably be um, anesthetized if we were gonna do this because if it moves around, we don't get a very good image. So we're not gonna do that today. Um, but we'll put it on here and then I can show you kind of what happens and it, it's this this spins around and kind of takes a, a spiral x-ray that will show us little slices so if you're looking it's like looking at a whole slice or a whole loaf of bread versus individual little slices of bread if, if that makes sense um why don't you yeah Sydney and a bunch of others have a quick question yeah does this turtle have a name this turtle does not have a name. This turtle has um, a couple of different identification numbers, um, but this turtle is going to go back out and live in the wild. And so if, if he has a name, only he and his other turtle friends know what it is. Sean's asking how old will this turtle get? This turtle will live to be about 50 years old. So yeah, so it's, they're, they're pretty impressive. They can live for a long time. So, so let's pretend we're going to do a CT scan of this turtle. So we would, we would, we would put it on that, on that little foam pad that you saw. And um, if I were actually taking um, an image, um, it would look something like this. So 
So why is this machine rotating right now? What, what would be happening if you were taking a real CT scan? So that would be... It would be taking x-ray, like one continuous x-ray, around and around for about 30, 35 seconds. Um, and when it's all finished, I'll show you what it looked like. It just take it takes just a couple minutes to pull up. So while it does that, um, let me show you. You're asking about how many eggs the turtle lay, and so this this is what X-rays used to be. They're actually like film, and we used to have to develop them um, with you know developing chemicals and everything. So this was a pond turtle back in 2005, and as you can see this is a female turtle because these are the eggs that are inside her body. So she has what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eggs. It's pretty cool. So tell us the difference between this X ray here, this this image, and what you were doing in there. So it, it most of it was very similar. So we put the turtle on um, instead of putting it on a digital uh, imaging plate, we put it on um, an x-ray plate that contained this piece of film in it. And, and we put the turtle down on it just like we did in the other room. And we took the x-ray. And so instead of showing up on the digital screen, then we had to develop the film. And so the image came out on the film instead. So if we wanted to make this a digital image, we could just take a picture of it. Because <laughs> we can do that these days. So we had a question. Do we know if yeah. this turtle is a boy or a girl? This turtle is a boy. This turtle is a boy. Mm -hmm. And I and we know that because his his plastron, his bottom shell has is shaped kind of concave shaped as opposed to flat. Misha is asking, what do you call a baby turtle? Um a, a baby turtle. <laughs> A hatchling. If it's just came out of the egg, it's called a hatchling, just like a, like a baby bird, which right. then goes on to become a chick. So now we've got our CT, and we can do these amazing three-dimensional reconstructions. Um, back when people first started doing CTs, though, it would look like this, and so I can scroll through, and these are the slices. So what we're looking at. This is the shell, the bony part on the outside, right? So here's the top of the, the turtle. And so these are the, the, the bones of the spine, oops, which then spread out to the shell. So the black part in here is actually the turtle's lungs. And then these are more bones. So these are the, the neck bones and the beginnings of the leg bones. And then back here is the, the tail and the, the bottom legs. Um, so this is the old version, right? This of, is the of, old version, the yep. Scan. Yep. So let's, let's check out what a new one looks like. So the new version that we're able to, thanks to today's technology. So here's what the turtle looks like with all of its skin on, basically. But what I can do is I can um, change it I can just uh, scroll through so that we can see um, what the skeleton looks like underneath. This is really cool, watch this. Uh -huh. Here it goes, here it goes. So suddenly we get to look inside the turtle and we can see what the skeleton looks like. Isn't that amazing? See if I can do this. What's well, one of the things that really fascinates me about turtles? All, a lot of things fascinate me about turtles. But you see what just popped up in here? Turtles and a lot of other reptiles, lizards, and birds actually have little bones in their eyes to help to stabilize them and to keep their eyes uh, proper shape. Just, I think that's so cool. <laughs> So Macy's asking, how do they retract their heads into their shells? Oh, Macy, that's a great question. So I can just show you right here. So what you can see right here, these, these are the bones of its neck. 
And so when the turtle's got his head pulled into its shell, it uses all these the neck muscles to just tuck its head back inside its shell. Um, and then when it wants to pop out, it the, these bones can unfold and extend right out of the shell. Does that make sense? You can just sort of see how Virginia's that is. asking if turtles have ears. Turtles do have ears. So see this hole right here? That's it might, it might be easier if you point with your finger because Okay. The so here's here's where the turtle's ear is right here. And I don't know if this turtle will let us show us his ears. <laughs> if he comes out he can show us. But it just it's got a little skin membrane over the top, so you can't see this hole but the ears are there. Martine wants to know how big is a turtle's heart? Oh, Martine, that's a very interesting question too. Um, this particular CT won't let us see the turtle's heart. Um, there are ways that we can use CT to see the internal organs. We'd have to um, inject it with a certain kind of dye, but if we hold the turtle about here, the heart is about, about that big and it would be right about in here, inside this turtle. And Caden is asking why they retract their head into their shell. Um, well, this is, this is their home and it's a safe place. So Caden, um, um, if a predator, if you were a coyote and you wanted a turtle dinner and um, the turtle saw you coming, it would pull into the shell and it can, it, it's very strong. I don't know if you can tell how strong this is, but it can hold its whole body inside the shell and be safe from predators. Maddie's asking, can the turtle feel you touching it even when you're just touching its shell? Um, that's a really good question. I don't think so. It's got kind of skin on the outside. I don't think there's too much um, nerve you know, nerves are what we use to feel things. Um, so there are definitely nerves in these softer places here. I don't think there's too much nerve on the outside. Um, so he probably can't feel it. He probably feels like the warmth of my hands um, coming through, but not feeling me touching. Kelly's asking, uh, or Kelly's asking how good is their sense of smell? Kelly, I don't know that, but I would, I would like to look that up and answer it answer that because that is a fascinating question. And Caitlin's asking how big is this turtle's brain? Oh that's a good question too. So let's see for that we can go to this image and you can see here is the turtle's skull and so let's see here's here's where its eye is and so this is the inside of the skull so the brain is about that big inside its head. And there, here's another nice version, a nice uh, view of the neck too, that you can see it all folded up. Freya is asking if turtles make noise. Uh, some turtles do make noise, Freya. This turtle, I don't know if you can hear it, but he's kind of hissing a little bit when he breathes because he's, he's a little angry with me, I think. Um, but some turtles actually make kind of a funny little grunting sound. And Stella is asking if we have x-rays of any other animals. Stella, I am so glad you asked. Follow me. <laughs> Let's see. We happen to have, I'm going to have to pull up. Don't look. So. I have here all kinds of x-rays, some of the more interesting ones that we've taken of some of our animals. So this is one of our three-banded armadillos. Um, armadillos, of course, have the really interesting armor on the outsides of their bodies, um, kind of like a turtle do, although instead of being bony, there's a little bit of kind of bone component, but most of it is composed of what's called keratin, which is the same thing that your hair and your fingernails are made of. Um, so here's his skull, there's his backbone, and how many of you guys have ever read the book Everyone Poops? If you haven't, I highly recommend it. This is armadillo poop on the x-ray. <laughs> um, let's see, what's the next? 
So this, anyone want to guess what this is? This is the x-ray of a penguin. Um, and so it's, it's really interesting to see, but again, just like that turtle x-ray we saw, this penguin has an egg in her. Um, I don't remember if it was fertile or not. Um, this penguin also um, um, ate rocks, and it's normal for birds to eat rocks. Um, instead of having teeth to chew their food, they um, eat rocks, and they have a special compartment of their stomach called the gizzard, and that grinds up their food, um, just like your teeth do in your mouth. Um, this penguin ate more rocks than she should have, but she's doing just fine. Margo, Bree is asking if armadillos are related to turtles. Oh, that's a good question. No, they are not actually. Armadillos are in um, are classified as mammals. So, like you and I are mammals because we have hair, and um, most most mammals give birth to live young, whereas turtles are reptiles. Um, but but there's some really interesting parallels that crop up in nature, um, depending on you know what the needs of different different species are. Cody is asking, does the x-ray hurt the eggs? It, it, if we take just one x-ray, it won't hurt the eggs, but that is a really good question. So what are we looking at here now? So this is, this is a snake. I think this was one of our ball pythons. Um, snakes are fascinating. Their skeletons are really interesting. So here you can see the skull and then the, almost the whole rest of the snake is spine or backbone and ribs. And those are basically the only bones that they have in their whole body. Kyria, and we're gonna be, there's a little lag, so there's some, there's gonna be some questions about the previous one. Yep. But Kyria is asking uh, how many eggs penguins have at a time, these humble penguins. Penguins usually, they only lay one egg at a time, but they can lay up to two eggs in um, a breeding season. But their their eggs are pretty big inside their body, so there's not a lot of room for more than one. So what's this? This is a mongoose, and um, so this is its stomach. So it ate something that had maybe some grit or something in it so that's what we're seeing here there's this little skull um, this is um, a microchip that we use here at the zoo to identify a lot of our different animals i don't know if you notice our turtle had one as well um, some of you probably have dogs and cats that have a microchip so if it gets lost um, you just have a little device where you can read the number and identify it daniel had a question of how many hearts does a snake have a snake has one heart, here let's go back, a snake has one heart but it's very long and skinny just like everything about a snake. So it's, it's let's see, its heart would probably be, it's about a quarter of the way down the length of its body so that it would probably be in here somewhere. It just didn't, it didn't show up on this x-ray. So Otis is asking how would the zoo x-ray an elephant or a hippo or some huge animal like that? That is a fantastic question. Um, the answer to that, Otis, is that we can't x-ray the whole elephant or the whole hippo, um, but we do x-ray um, like their feet. Elephant feet, um, we'll, we'll x-ray like one toe at a time, um, but we can't really, there's no real good way to get an x-ray of the whole animal that, that, that's that big. Let's move on. Okay. What's this? This is a bat, and it's pretty fascinating to see. Um, so these are the these are its little feet that it hangs by its feet, and then these are the bones of the wings. Um, if we had another view, you could see that these are actually just exactly like the fingers of your hand, except they all they have skin. Here's a little piece of the skin that goes between the feet and the wings. Um, that they use to fly. And these you can see the intestines in this bat really well too. It's kind of fascinating. Jack is asking, do we have a skin of a fish? And yes, Jack, we have one coming up. Oh yeah. Jack, you're okay, but first this is a beaver tail that I just think is really cool. So these are these are bones of the spine, just like the back bones that go down into the tail. And then you can see the, the skin 
um, kind of the fatty skin around the outside of the beaver tail. That's one of his toes. This is one of my favorites. This is a chameleon. And we took this x-ray um, with a chameleon sitting on a stick. So you can see the stick there. And just, I love the way the tail curls up in this one. But again, it's all just the spine. Rachel was asking that Rodriguez flying fox, what uh -huh. kind of food does that bat eat? That bat eats fruit. They love all kinds of fruit. We give them some vegetables too, but I think bananas are their absolute favorite. What's this? This is a tiger paw. And if some of you guys have cats at home, you can look too. Um, tigers and most cats, except for cheetahs, have what are called uh, retractable claws. So kind of, kind of like the turtle's neck that folded up inside the turtle's body, the, the tiger's toes kind of are all folded up with the claws between little folds of skin. And then if the tiger wants to stretch, its, it, uh, bring its claws out, it, it flexes muscles in the toes and it, it straightens the fingers out and makes the claws come out. Pretty fascinating. Uh, this is a toucan skull, and as you can see, the toucan's beak does not look as dense as the bone, say, of its skull, um, and that's because this beak is again made of keratin, the same stuff as your fingernails or your hair, um, so it's very, very lightweight, um, and it actually, um, among other things, helps the toucan regulate its body temperature. We have a couple of questions. This last one from Tova about why do chameleons change color? Oh man, that is a, that's a good question too. I think they, chameleons are, um, they change color to try to blend in with their surroundings so predators can't find them. Um, they want to stay invisible and they can probably also use it to sneak up on, um, on the, the food that they eat so they don't see them coming. So, all right, let's go through. This is a fat-tailed gecko. So that's the, the bones at the tail, and these are the little fatty skin pads around it, which I just think is really cool. And again, kind of, if you, if you notice, there are parallels, like the wing of the bat would be similar to the little bones of the hand in the gecko here. This is an Inca tern, a bird. So the bones of the hand of this bird, he only has a, a couple of fingers, just you know, like you and I have fingers, so this is this is its arm and this is its hand, but but in a bird, all of that comes together to be the wing. It's good. And then this is an owl. This is a little owl. Um, another another bird, obviously. They look pretty funny, don't they? They don't look the same. This owl would be just covered with feathers and it would look a lot bigger. Um, funny thing about owls, here is the owl's eyes. And this is its brain. Its eyes are actually bigger than its brain. Who knew? And this is back to turtle. We you still have your our turtle friend with us, right? We do. He's sitting on my lap. He looks pretty happy. We've had some questions about whether it hurts if these turtles bite. Yes, yes it does. We try very hard not to let that happen. They have, they don't have teeth, but they have, this is very um, hard, bony, sharp surface in their mouth. And um, yeah, you would feel it if it bit you. JJ asked, what are some ways we can help turtles? Oh, that's some, there are a lot of different ways you can help turtles. Um, these turtles are endangered because of um, habitat loss. So whatever you can do to try to kind of keep habitats um, in their natural state, wherever you might live, it's, that's going to help all of the animals that are best adapted to living in your region. Um, so kind of being aware of that, um, being mindful of the amount of water that you use because the turtles and there are a lot of animals that need clean water to live in and survive. Those are some ways. Um, you know, learn everything that you can about them um, and, and it'll become evident to you some of the other things that you can do. We'll, take, we'll have one last question here. Okay. It, was, it was, how did you become a vet tech? Um, that's a good question. Um, a vet tech, um, 
in today's world to become a vet tech there are a lot of um, colleges have a two-year veterinary technician program so you basically get an associate's degree you go to school for two years um, most vet techs obviously work in the in the world of um, veterinarians that take care of pets and livestock so I feel very very fortunate to be able to take care of zoo animals um, I have a a uh, college degree in wildlife biology, which I think helped um, me on my way to becoming a vet tech at a zoo also. Um, and yeah, there's, but there's so, there's so much that we can learn from all these animals. I learn something every day from every animal that I work with. And uh, I'm really grateful to be able to share this with you today. Um, I'm sorry we didn't get a, a fish x-ray. I thought we had one, but... We'll, po we'll definitely post that in the comments. We'll post one, yeah. That would be good. Well, thanks, Margo, for showing us around the vet center today. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you guys all came out here. And um, be sure to check uh, the link on this page when we're done for all kinds of more information and activities. Um, everybody stay safe and enjoy your time and thank you all so much for watching.